Hello, the Reds. It is the preview show. Southampton v Liverpool, Friday night football. The Reds looking to go back to the top of the league after Cardiff lay down for Man City the other night. Did you expect anything else from a Neil Warnock side? I know I didn't. Um, so, Gareth Roberts, Ben Johnson, Adam Melia to talk about this game. Uh, Southampton's big goal scoring hope is Danny Ings and he can't play. Uh, so that's good, isn't it? That's a good start. Uh, Southampton are 16th, the Reds are a, a second, obviously, in the bookies make this a foregone conclusion, pretty much, to be honest, boys. Uh, Southampton are 7-1 to one, uh, to get a win. The draws 4-1 to one and Liverpool are odds on, 5-2 to two on. Um, would you sort of go against that, or is it, are we talking again a game that Liverpool should defo be winning? I mean, so... It's it's interesting Southampton. Like how's you? We, we, I'll I'll give you facts and figures in a minute. But just how do you feel about Southampton? I think the the, the underlying narrative. I don't really know what the results have been. Their underlying narrative in my head is and since this fella come in, they're actually boss. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The narrative you'd have yourself believe and everyone believe is, oh, he's, he's a genius this fella. And since he's been in, he, the the they're doing all kinds. But then every now and again you just think, oh, so well, they got off, they got beat. And you're like, oh, well, um, maybe he's just had an off day, I don't know. So I wouldn't be surprised if you said, actually, they're a bit shit. Adam? Um, I you see them as a bogey <laughs> side, was, was what I was wanting one years to say, because well, everyone yeah, seems I mean, to think they, they are. They, it's, it, there's, there's just, they're, they're a funny one. I don't think there's any side you can really compare them to, especially when they play us, because we've had that many of their players and they hate us. Um, and that's, I mean, they're not alone in that, but um, they are, they're, they're not a team that, that you, you particularly pay that much attention to necessarily. Um, and I think they're probably having a worse, a worse season than, than par, but they've, then they've kind of, they were, they were crap because obviously they've got Mark Hughes and he's crap. And then uh, they've got this new fellow in who's a bit better. And it seems like they've turned into one of those sides that plays well against big teams, especially at home. And so that this is this is the thing that, that that you know I'm if you're worried about anything it's that it it's that we need not we, we we don't need anything wild to happen because we need it to go as 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 form would dictate and as the bookies would suggest it will, um so that it being Friday night so the, the that I think that's why you know a bit nervous about the Friday night aspect because that is wild isn't it it's it's you know it's the wrong time to be playing footy for a start and you know it's a long way away and you know all that they'll have all been you know drinking. Pints of scrumpy or whatever it is they like. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting each other with pitchforks outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, Southampton, let's do it then. Uh, their last game, they beat uh, Brighton 1-0 away. These are all in the league. Um, they beat Spurs 2-1 at home. Uh, they lost uh, to Manchester United 3-2 away. Uh, they beat Fulham 2-0 at home, Fulham a crap, so we can't read anything into that one. And they lost to Arsenal 2-0 uh, away. That's their last five, so... One, three, were they 2-0 up against United? They were at least 2-1 uh, up. They were, yeah, they were something they, like that. Yeah. And then, and, uh, but in general, their season so far, as I said, they're 16th in the league. Uh, they've won eight games all season, drawn nine, lost 14. Uh, average goal score per match, 1.13. The Reds is 2.25. Uh, they, on average, they concede 1.6 goals a match. The Reds concede 0.59 goals per match. Uh, the, the Red, I mean, this is one of the things you've got to remember, really. But whatever we want to say about Southampton, really, the Reds have been absolutely mustered on the, on the road, um, and especially in terms of, like, defensively. And there was, I don't know if you've seen this. It, it, it kind of made me laugh, but I know clubs are into producing their own content now, and I get why and all the rest of it, but there's a piece on their website right now Tactical Watch, it's called, and uh, it's it's written by you know a journalist or whatever down there, and it says uh, it, the the headline is halting Liverpool's charge, and then I read the whole thing, and the whole thing basically said we were boss, and it, <laughs> and it honestly all the way through it was going on about how good the defence were, how, how we scored goals for fun last season, this season we're still scoring quite a lot, but now the defence is great. It was going on about Fabinho being a great player, and how it was a surprise that he didn't play against Spurs. And it went all the way through, and I was like, where's the bit where you say, how are you going to halt the Liverpool charge, mate? <laughs> and then I got towards the end, and I'm going to read this bit out, because as I say, it made me laugh a little bit. They, they said at the end, all of this together has helped Liverpool achieve balance across the pitch from defence to attack, from wing to wing. They can call upon so many strengths, and as such, there's no tangible on-pitch weakness to pick out. <laughs> Great! <laughs> Off the heads! And then, they go, uh, then it goes, uh, instead... 
Liverpool's greatest vulnerability is their own mental state, how they cope with the pressure of every game being a must-win. The stresses of this title race are visible in this team and its performances when things don't go their way. And when opponents sit in and frustrate them and elements of desperation enters the fans' voices and the players' actions. It is this that Southampton must look to prey on and punish. And given the excellent record against the top six, Ralph Hassenhuttle's men boast eight points taken, second only to Wolves. One might argue the scene is set for a title tilting evening. That was the best thing you've managed. We're going to bottle it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's. I think there's there's two things. I think when you when you follow on Liverpool, and you follow, like the pressure wear ons of watching it every week. You build up this fear in your own head. <sighs> What's going to go wrong this week? And so far, really, when you look at the league across the whole, you know, since the start to now, not a lot's gone wrong mm. at all. Do you know what I mean? And and I think y you can fall into a trap of thinking, nah, this is too good to be true. Something's going to go wrong. We're going to revert to our old type somewhere. Like your man says, maybe we'll we'll panic a little bit, or maybe the forwards won't fire, or maybe the defence will knock off, or... It's easy to forget as a fan how good this team is. This team's doing stuff we haven't seen before, ever. This is, you know, we haven't seen this as long as I can remember going to match the stuff we're doing, the, you know, getting beat once in the whole season to date. You know, by rights, the position we're in, we should be top of the league by a considerable distance. And it's only that there's two absolutely brilliant sides in this league that we're not. And I think when it, when you look at it, when you when you look at it like that, and you see someone else with it, you know externally looking at it, clutching its straws, trying to find a reason as to why they might get something, their heads might go. Well, they might do. And a game, a game with any game of footy can go on a decision. Someone might get sent off, the referee might be crap, you know, you might have dead hard lines, but looking at it, you know, with no real compassion and just watch, watching the two teams on the merits, you just can't see anything else. Forget Friday night, forget anything. You can't see anything else in the Liverpool win because we're just too good. I think we've, I think we've had, we've had hard lines and we've had, we've had adversity as well. This is, this is one way where I think we kind of maybe have an advantage on City, is that, um, is that when things have, have, have gone wrong for us a little bit during games, the team have been good enough and clever enough, um, for the most part, to, to think their way through it and, and for it to only happen once, kind of thing. Because in teams of Liverpool teams of the past, not to compare us to anyone else except ourselves, really, if things did go wrong, then then that what he said there, that's true. You know that you've, you've, we've all seen that over the years. Um, that that, that it, it's only taken kind of one thing when we've already been feeling a bit of pressure, and things have kind of unravelled yeah. a bit. And I think I just think, I, th I think we're not there now, and, and it's, changed, it's changed. And and I think that, that this is this is why my big thing at the minute is I just don't see us. I don't see us conceding more than one. It's either going to be none or one for most games yeah. now. Well, the only game away from home in the league we've conceded more than one. City, City, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's 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 basically a thing of, you know, what what how many how many different things need to need to go wrong for us to even concede one. And then we've shown that we can we can get ourselves past it. And and you know, Fulham looked like it was it was it was there to be a disaster. There wasn't long before the end. We had long enough to get it back. Spurs again. So. It's 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 funny actually because I was I, I was wondering what it is, was you were going to say when they said how how are they going to stem the ties because how is it that exactly that they're going to trigger this the, mental the, the, this I mental know. thing they're going to like come dressed as city or I'm just surprised like, <laughs> carry us mask or something. <laughs> I'm just surprised that it's it's on the official site like I mean you know like the editor hasn't gone. I'll leave that this week. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? You haven't really come up with many reasons why we're going to win. It was like a, one of their players as well. It was a person that I think has been in the press saying, you know, like, I, I, I've been looking at Liverpool's weaknesses. What, what are they, mate? Because yeah. um, he was going on about, you know, like, uh, like you'll be up against Salah and all this, the fella interviewing him. And he's like, well, uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I won't prepare any differently to usual. And I'm like, well, that's on. He's a 16th, so... I'm up for that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, their record it, it, against Liverpool as well. I mean, everyone assumes that they that they're this bogey side, but they're winless in the last five Premier League meetings with Liverpool, drawn two, lost three. They failed to score each time. Uh, although at St Mary's, of the last ten Premier League games there against Liverpool, they've won five of them, uh, and they're the only side that they, they've got a better record in that time against is Everton. <laughs> Um, so I just thought to get that in, have crowbars in, having a go at Everton and I made it, up with myself. There's a nil-nil there in 2016 
um, when we were we were I think we'd won every every game up to then or or, or something. We we were we were kind of felt we were going for the league then, and it, and I remember it being a real pain in the ass. That's that's the one that's kind of in my head as you know. I, I hope it's not like that. I hope it's um, that it's not where we just one where we really just struggled to to, to break them down. I think um, Mane has one chance and that's it in that in that game for us. Um, so that's that's the only one where I think that that. It, it, you know, we're looking at recent times where we've been there, where you think they have actually made it really awkward. Um, but then, uh, so so I went there when we played them there last season. I kind of thought, oh, I was thinking the same thing. I hope it's not like that nil nil. And then we just uh, we just completely professionally beat them with no. Hardly, it felt like we hardly broke a sweat. Mm-hmm. So that please. I mean, it's interesting, you know, Adam says about the Friday thing as well, because I've heard other people saying that, and I, I understand why people say it because you. You know, it's like you said, you start like painting a bit of a picture in your head, you think, oh, they're all going to be up for it, the eighters anyway, there's the thing with us buying their players and all the rest of it, you know, like on the scrumpy and all that sort of stuff. Our players but, will still be pissed from Ladies Day or something. But, <laughs> but, but, then, <laughs> but then I've heard loads of people who are going, like made up, going, yeah. oh, it's a great trip, it's, I'm made up, it's on the Friday, I've took the day off. Klopp was talking about it and he was saying, it's a great time to play football, I like to play football at night anyway. Um, and then Liverpool Friday night games they've won five of the last six as well. So again, it's it's something you can talk yourself into or out of. Yeah, well. I think I think you know this isn't a team who's not who's who's going to be scared going into the grounds and and you think oh it's a big atmosphere and they're going to be up for it. We plays in Europe also, you know the last two years the places we've been to as as a side and, and dealt Munich, with Bayern you know, Munich we've been <laughs> quiet in the crowd play forty one and. I think that's that's so massive, you know. I was thinking about that exact thing, the Bayern Munich thing. You'd think, you know, that this is going to be a bit hostile on Friday. And then you think, they've just been to the Allianz Arena on, you know, a, a, a night game, exactly the same. And it was boom and the crowd right behind. You know, and, and, and all the way through, really, they, they, they were loud. And it's, it, it, there's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no demons at Southampton to scare I, this, this team. That's the thing. People saw a whole bogey team. If Rodgers is in charge... Then yeah, we'd probably get beat because when he was in charge, we bought all the shit players from them. We, we <laughs> used to get beat because they had a cob on. Now, now they didn't have a cob on with Virgil, so from <laughs> what? Yeah, the, I, I mean, if I was them and they'd sold Virgil for seventy-five million, as I, we'd sold him for seventy-five, I'd have a cob on because he's worth about sixteen billion. <laughs> they did well to keep him quiet in a way. I mean, I know we knew about him and everything, but I know. But managed to keep him under wraps. So if they want to boo someone, he can boo Lovren. He can be on the bench. Yeah, you just, you just stick him in like yeah, have him in the old <laughs> crap. Just, just lash him in the stands. Like, just take him, take, take him apart for a bit, and we'll just win the match while he's doing. I, I just think it, if Liverpool don't win this match, it'll be because of what Liverpool do, not because of what anyone else does. So the only way I see Liverpool not winning it is, the, is if they're not at it. And they don't, they don't play well and the attitude's not right. Now, we haven't seen that once this season, that the attitude's not been right. OK, we haven't played well sometimes, but even still, I think even if we don't play well, we've got enough to win. Um, I think I don't know if we might make a few changes. I think he might might do a few diddles. I'm, I'm, I've got him here, that Divock's playing, left-wing Divock. Um, He's enjoyed himself down there before, though, hasn't he? So yeah, why not? and I've just got him here, he might play left-wing Divock and he might go... Uh, play the four, Divock, uh, and the other three forwards and go bit of a two in the field. I don't know why I've made that up. I just thought <laughs> it this morning, that's something I might say. I don't think anyone said that, I'll say that. Neil said it on the Friday show yesterday. Fuck <laughs> 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 I should probably watch this fucking carry on, shouldn't I? I don't know if it's been out yet. I don't know if it's out yet. But I was nodding along what then, thinking you? someone else. What time is it? Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, why these work out and what they're going to say next. <laughs> Me and Sam went down to Southampton in the summer. We had a chat with the Southampton fan. He was a lovely fella. We had a nice pint. We asked him about what he think about Liverpool. We asked him about where we should go for a pint if you're going down there and all that sort of stuff. So where's that? Here we are then, St Mary's Stadium, the home of Southampton FC. Once it was the Dell, but now this is their home. Eh? Older people will remember the Dell, that tight stadium where Liverpool lost its scene quite a few times. and. Southampton have been a little bit of a bogey team for Liverpool down the years. Um, I've just had a quick look and at the time of filming, we've lost 44% of our games away to Southampton. So that's, a, you know, given the status of the two teams, that's, that's a team that traditionally causes a, a few problems. But last season, it was routine enough, wasn't it? We won home and away. We'll be hoping for more of the same this time around. But given the number of Southampton players Liverpool have bought in recent times, there is now a little bit of a niggle 
between the two sets of fans. Uh, we've heard some songs from their fans that we don't particularly like. They, it seems, from being around the city today, um, aren't particularly fond of Liverpool, and it's I don't quite understand why. But I've asked a fan why, uh, and Mark Sanderson has kindly spoken to us. He's a nice lad. He's recommended a good boozer for you, and he's going to tell you why people in Southampton don't really like Liverpool. Yeah, so I'm Mark Sanderson, Saints fan for 30 years, well, 35 years, man and boy, author of the book Bobby Stokes, the man from Portsmouth who scored Sub's most famous goal. I forget, I've been supporting Saints for a bit long. A lot of kids, they started supporting us when we were in League One, and there was a really quick growth. League One, Championship, young team, building something, then, oh, you're not going to be able to cut it in the Premier League, and we did, and we got one on Koeman, and we were winning at Old Trafford, and we had a fantastic team, and all of a sudden, Liverpool seemed to be the main team chipping away at our players. That wasn't the main thing. The main thing, I think, was, was where social media was used as the weapon that if we were to sign a new player, It'd be like something that would go viral, welcome to Liverpool's new centre-back, centre-forward. And because people care, because they love football, that would really hurt them. Oh, I would say hatred. You've become, without Portsmouth, you've become maybe the, the new main rival. Well, I suppose for most people, the, the favourite game against Liverpool for Saints fans would have been the, the win at Anfield. Second leg of the League Cup, where Shane Long scored that last-minute goal. But for me, probably... What would be bigger than that was one of my very early games at the Dell when Saints beat Liverpool 4-1. Yeah. Worst, it's been quite a lot really. I remember getting battered 7-1 up there. Um, a few FA Cup games as a kid, I remember listening, I remember playing up at Anfield in the FA Cup. I think probably about 1990. Really bright day and Tim Flowers up to ask someone in the crowd for a, for a hat. I think we lost three, three or four nil. I was a bit upset that day, being a, being a kid. Suarez was, was hard up to like. I actually sc saw him score a hat trick at the Dell when he was playing for Ajax. And you thought, oh wow, I've heard him being spoke about. And he looked, he looked phenomenal, but I suppose from your point of view, from a Liverpool, Liverpool fan, he, he wanted to win at all costs. But occasionally playing against him, you think, oh, you know. I thought, like, can I swear? Yeah, no. of course you can. Yeah, what a shit house, you know. <laughs> but um, it goes both ways. It's players I've liked. I mean, as a kid growing up, John Barnes, football was on TV so much, and players tended to do the control the ball, sideways pass, but he had this sort of lovely, sort of slalom style and uh, wonderful to watch. You know, I think everyone sort of liked John Barnes, or I certainly did as a 10 year old kid. If Liverpool fans are coming en masse, you're going to get just chucked into Yates' on the high street, so you might as well be anywhere in the country. But if you're coming in pockets of people, uh, the Dancing Man Brewery, where we are today, is a very nice a very nice pub. Got its own beers. They're very much into music. There's often a Liverpool theme, a lot of Beatles love. Obviously, you weren't from Liverpool, but people like Shaq were very much influenced by them. So it's got that sort of vibe they might enjoy. I think, I think people would like to see us definitely finish top 10, maybe challenge for Europe, but also try and look like we're having fun at home, have a go at the other team. I think, I think fans can take it if you lose. They want to see the team have a go, get behind the, the opposition. I know Terry Payne, you know, England squad 66, who played for Saints Division 3 South, right up Division 1, he always said that fans would tolerate anything, but they want to see the, the wingers getting behind the defence, have a go. I think that's still, I think that's probably the same for all fans. And that's Jose Mourinho as your manager, you know. <laughs>there you go so that's Southampton and that's what it's like uh, I did enjoy my pint down there so it's one of them there is there is alright places to have a pint I think um, there is somewhere honestly one pub anyway there was one pub that was alright uh, ok well recently against Southampton I mentioned before this idea of the bogey side thing uh, we beat them 3-0 at Anfield earlier in the season we went down there and beat them 2-0 in uh, February 3-0 at Anfield last no the season before in the November the nil-nil Adam mentioned was May 2017, and then you're going back to sort of when we were playing them in that League Cup semi-final, and they obviously knocked us out. That's 2017, and yeah, it's just not a fear here for me. I, I mean, look, you know, like, as you said before, they've, every, every side you play has got like a puncher's chance and all that sort of stuff. But I think with Van Dijk being back fit, which Klopp confirmed in the press conference, 
we're going to be all right, aren't we? I think you would think so. I, I, I struggle to see how they're going to create enough. They struggle to create. I think. I think they. I think. The difference is this fella's come in, he's changed the way they play slightly. They're a bit more aggressive without the ball and they're a bit more a bit more of a clue about them, but still they've got the same players as you said before. They haven't got Danny Ings and they've got the same players who they're gonna try and impose this, you know, disrupt this Liverpool side in a way that makes us concede more goals than we have against anyone else in the league. I can't see it. And I can see us definitely scoring. Do you um, expect Fabinho to start? Yes, I do, yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I, keep, I keep saying that and he keeps not starting. But yeah, I, I do expect him to start. <clears throat> and, and I think that, 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 that we, we, we should, as, as Ben said, we should have enough. The, the, I mean, the thing, the thing that we haven't been doing is going 2 0 up. And so, I mean, if I'm being kind of picky, I'd say I'd like us to go 2 0 up. Um, because we. It, goals that, every 10 minutes? Yeah, yeah, goal, goal after 10 and then every 10 minutes thereafter. For the rest of the season till please. the end of June. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, uh, and, and this, the, so, so their manager, um, I think he's seen in Germany as one of a, a, a new a new generation of kind of mini clops, or you know, the, the, the clop generation is sort of that there's there's this new generation and Hassel Hassan Hootel's one of them, and so I think he'll he'll be he'll be thinking of this as a big a big thing for him and his yeah. career. Um, so there's, there's, you know, you, you never know if they've got, if he, he might have something up his sleeve that you know he hasn't, hasn't kind of done before. But I just, I, it, it, it's one of them where, in, it, if, if after ten minutes they haven't kind of got off to a flyer and managed to get some sort of two goal lead, you just, you just think that, that there's going to be enough time for Liverpool to, to work out whatever it is and and uh, and, and, and do the business. Uh, before we go to Neil, who's going to go through the tactics, he's been speaking to Southampton fans, so he's got a bit of a clue about how they might set up and what they might do. I just wanted to tackle the whole banter bullshit thing, the Liverhampton or whatever, you know, because it's so tiresome. And I've seen a thing this morning, like Jimmy Case lives down there. And basically, like, like he was basically saying, you know, I go for a pint and there's all these fellas having a go at me because Liverpool bought players. And he's like, He's got money for them, do you know what I mean? But also as well, I, I, I've worked it out for years. So in 127 years of football, Liverpool have brought 10 Southampton players into, into Anfield and one was on loan. That was Paul Jones with his massive shorts. Um, and one was Ricky Lambert, so... They yeah, had, you should be fucking thankful for that, you <laughs> fucking cheeky fuckers. They, they've had five players off us. Um, and yeah, I mean, eight of the players are in the noughties, but like I say, you know, we we, we defo paid, um, and, and yet so you know, we Van Dijk, Mane, Klein, Lovren, Lalana, Lambert, Crouch, Paul Jones on loan, and then before two thousand and four, and Paul Jones on loan, the fella before that was a uh, Frank Greyer. Heard of him? And uh, it was July nineteen twelve. We paid hundred quid for him. Got up his arm well. <laughs> <laughs> straight, straight, straight and before that, now I'll yeah. avoided going on the Titanic and uh, <laughs> <laughs> play for Southampton and then come to us instead. Joseph Hall before that as well in uh, May 1903, he was 75 quid. Um, so, you know, see if anyone's kicking off about that when uh, when we all go down there on Friday. But yeah, I mean, can we just jib that? Because it's that boring and it's like... If anything, you should be flattered. We'd be, like, seriously, we bought... Especially that little tranche of players that we bought, uh, Lovren, Lalane, that that was as a direct consequence of them being a really good side. We were like, oh, we need good players. Let's buy them good players because they're playing really well for them. I think Pochettino did at the time, so it, it, it they should be flattered. And then the second thing is they've been, they should have had enough money to build a side that is capable of being, yeah. you know, the money they've had off us, they've had, I don't know how much it is, it must be close to fucking 150 million quid. It, it's, one of those, it's one of those kind of blue nose things, isn't it, where they're, they're, they're lashing out at the other clubs when they really should be looking internally because they, they kind of did a bit of a, they, they, they managed that money badly and they, you know, as I say, ended up with Les Reed appointing Mark Hughes and then they end up both getting sacked and that's kind of like, that was the end of that of, of that process where they've just, they've just, they have made a mess of, of, of what was initially a really, a really good side but it's not our fault. Yeah, 75 million quid for Virgil, 30 million quid for Mane, 12 and a half million quid for Nathaniel Klein, 20 million quid for Dexy Lovren, 25 million pound for Lallana, four and a half million quid for Lambert, seven million quid for Peter Crouch, Jonesy was free, 
100 quid and 75 quid for the other two fellas. You, you're all right, you they know. Should, they should be getting us to play the testimonials, I think. That, 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 that'd be a better way to do it. Play them all, you know, yeah. bring them bring them back for... Uh, We've for, boxed it, it, it off. We've kept your club going, so can you stop singing the, the songs and be nice to us? Let's all have a nice pint of scrumpy together, yeah? Uh, OK, to end this uh, preview show, this slightly wild preview show, uh, here is Neil Atkinson in his race-going gear giving you a bit of tactics. Up the fucking reds. Since Ralph Hassenhutl has come in as Southampton manager, it'll be fair to observe three things. First and foremost, he's taken 24 points from 16 games. That's a rate of picking up points that's akin to Wolves and Watford, less themselves, Cardiff, Burnley, where they've been across the course of the season. The second thing it'd be fair to observe is he's done that without really having a settled forward, without having a centre forward option and attacker that he picks week in, week out. He'd like to have used Danny Ings more, I think that's fair to say, but he hasn't really had him available as much as he would like and he will not have him against Liverpool. Uh, and the third thing it would be fair to observe is that he's done that relative success without picking his preferred shape. What he's been picking is something that looks a little bit like this, three at the back or five at the back, depending on your point of view, but the average position of the wing-backs is really quite high. Uh, the other thing that he's had is in midfield, Hoiberg and Romeo have been very, very important to him. Let's say they're there and there. Uh, Ward-Prowse has become important in the most recent weeks and months. Uh, set pieces have been crucial. Armstrong and Redmond as I've set these up. But he might go with Charlie Austin uh, there. He might go with Shane Long. Long maybe to, to put Liverpool under a little bit of pressure, which might mean Redmond here, which might therefore mean no place for Armstrong. Uh, last weekend, he did go back four. So what he wants to play is what he did at Leipzig, which is the four, the two, two and two. Sorry, moving me counters around there really, which looks a little bit like that or maybe more accurately like this, is what he would like to do. Uh, but he's not really been able to. He's been saying that's because of the defence. Southampton's defenders had shipped a fair few goals before he arrived. I actually think it might be because he doesn't have a front two that he wants to rely on, a front two that he wants to use on a regular basis. That at times he's struggling for the front one, as mentioned earlier on. And so therefore that formation doesn't make a lot of sense to take two players out of all of this, throw them up here. If you don't even back one of them necessarily, it's quite a difficult thing, it's quite a tough thing to do. I think it will be back to a back three against Liverpool. I think if Vestergaard's fit, he definitely starts. Bedenak, Vestergaard, Yoshida, some combination there at the back. Valerie's playing right wing back for them. He's only 19. Might be happier going forward than going the other way. Bertrand's here. Vestergaard isn't fit. The expectation is Bertrand drops back into this back three on this side and that Matt Target will play there. You're then looking at Romeo and Holberg for certain will start. Uh, they will definitely start. Lamine has been had an abductor problem in the middle of his uh, stomach, so he's not been very available. I'd expect more Prowse to start and I'll say again Redmond will be one of these two who the other one is is it Armstrong is it Austin is it Long I think it may well just be Long back there like that and then this is the way in which I think it may well end up being for Southampton it's going to be a difficult game for Liverpool as I said before 24 points from 16 games is not to be sniffed at this is a manager who knows what he's doing but that could work for the Reds I think he will not necessarily compromise and just look to get everyone behind the ball and go from there I think instead what he may well look to do is say, listen, we need to play our football. That's what's going to get us out in the remaining games this season. If Southampton try to play running football, then I think Liverpool should beat them.